All right, folks, there we are. We are back. Apologies for the stream going down for a few minutes. We just had to switch over, get you on the main channel, get you all nice, sparkly, and ready because it's still on. OG one game up in this upper bracket against Vega, but they've got to get another win to make sure Vega has to go through the lower bracket and they just swim on through to the next round where they all go up against either TFT or NIP. Actually, no, I think it's been decided. In fact, let me just check the scoreboard. because I should have checked that before. That's a perfect opportunity. I believe it was NIP that took it, though. And Oh, my. Let me just double check this. Yes, NIP 2 owed the final tribe. So the final tribe weighing down the lower bracket to see who their opponent is going to be between these two teams. And OG, I don't know about you, Alan. They're already looking pretty hot and spicy to just plow through this. Oh, yeah. You, you have to like how they played in game one. That said, anybody who's played Dota for any length of time knows the feeling of just coming up against something new and sometimes you just get out strated and you say okay fine we'll come back and get in the next time and that was very close to happening in that last game with that topson arc Warden build that was game running I, I went through topson's arc warden games and the only one i could find where he hadn't built midas before was just a they got raffle stomped by eg at ti uh that you're just not used to the pace that that shadow blade rush into into orchid was going to bring to that last game most definitely but vega already looking to come out of these lanes ready to just plow through the side of og the phantom assassin has proven itself a formidable foe for any opponent so far yeah, I mean, there's a reason that this hero was like 70% win rate in the qualifiers. That's just nasty in the major qualifiers. Yeah, in the major qualifiers. Now, not to say anything against the minor, but these are the teams that didn't qualify. And if the majors were bringing out a 75% win rate, not to say you can't make it work just as well in the minor qualifiers. Well, yeah, you, we, we've talked about some of the reasons why I think flash farming, flash farming is already faster and I, I expect it to get continually faster still in this patch with the stat items being so much better and you know when you're pa and you can just hit your blur and farm the jungle without without creeps hitting you that that's efficiency right there man opening of acts coming out from og they right. are identifying they need to return the pressure lanes of course if Axe gets a good start you get a quick blink into play mail that counts the phantom assassin pretty damn well Absolutely. And, you know, to say nothing of the absolutely magnificent performances that we saw from Seb's Axe uh, at TI. You know, Axe, he had great Enchantress game and, of course, the Magnus game and the Clincher. Uh, but this is just a very solid hero. We've seen it in the first phase already four times, I believe, today. Well, we've seen it quite a few times. I mean, in general, this hero ever since TI has been getting increasingly more popular. It right. went to the 4-5 position for a bit. Back to a solid pick for the offlane once more. I think it still has that flex potential. I think a lot of the the tanky offlane right now fill that three four flex role, and it, it it's an important it's an important part of them being pickable in the first phase of the draft. All right, we've got to restart the call again. Let's go for that. That was a lot. Yeah, let's cut. go ahead and do that. We always forget, folks. We always, we're consistent. You got to give us credit for that. All right, there we go. All right, there we go. We are power Hopefully that will fix power. any issues. We're just we're here on the BTS channel and OBS. We are powered by Flower Power. And we had a uh, a temporary disconnect from No Tails in a flower. But we're back. <laughs> we do see a there Rubik. Hello. Yeah, OG burning through about a minute, uh, a minute and a half of their reserve time on the way to, to picking that Rubik. It's a decent pick all around. We've talked a lot about the arcane supremacy, especially in this hero, and it's flexibility between core and support yeah it, it you know the one thing to be aware of we touched on it in one of the other casts today the, the hero is squishy right you no longer have the the opportunity of snapping on that null field but the fact that arcane supremacy makes rubik it, it increases the number of kill combos that rubik can be a part of and well there's your lich so sticking to our guns from the last game there was nothing wrong. Sit your head in the sand. The Lich was not the problem. I mean, the Lich did do a decent amount in that early oh, mid-game. I, I thought that Lich Animage lane was was really sick. That looked super good in the beginning. And just having the the option of the Animage blinking forward with the Frost Shield on to just put a little bit of threat into that enemy lane. It's it's so uncommon that those Animage lane combinations will have that kind of threat. 
They definitely made the laning phase very simple for PyCat, and then past that, he was just left to his own devices. The question is, is what is OG going to do this game for PyCat? Is it going to be a similar focus of a 4 Protect 1 type lineup that a lot of teams seem to be transitioning towards? Nah, I, I mean, I think you could easily default back to like a Luna, which is a, a PyCat mainstay. He's so comfortable on that hero. He, he even plays a very, very good safe lane farming Marana. Most definitely. You could go for them right. That's actually another PyCat classic. I remember a few years back. We'd see a lot yep. of that. Although, you know, when he played too many games of Sing Sing, you didn't get to see it too much, mainly because Sing Sing won that hero. But definitely yeah, Sing, Sing Sing had so. quite a streak on Moran at one point. But again, it's just about with this with this arcane supremacy from the Rubik, it, it increases the setup for the arrow so much. And wise, we are seeing them get rid of the Terror Blade and the Morphling. They want to make sure those threats do not come out from the side of OG. <laughs> it's understandable. They can fight reasonably against the PA, especially if you get a buffer like the Axe. The question is, what does Vega need? They still need to get themselves an offlaner here. There's nothing so far that could fulfill that role. And so far, the Brewmaster has not been banned out. Yep, you got the Brewmaster still on the table. You could go right back to the Sand King. I do not. I you want to talk about what was and was not the problem? I don't think the Sand King was the problem in the previous game. Yeah, he definitely won't get the Magnus though. That was first phase yep. banned. They already anticipated that would likely come out if Kezu got the chance, especially after his performance earlier today, more or less carrying the game. Well, I, I'm at this point again. Counters will be discovered, and the meta will change as the patch goes on. But I'm going to say I am not leaving both Magnus and PA in. Against a team that has that has uh, certainly not against a team that has second pick, but even as a first phase overall, definitely accelerates the problem that PA presents going into that mid game. OG they did ban out the dazzle. Sometimes people feel it's surprising it made it that far. Of course, Vega was never going to pick it when there's already an axe on OG's side. It, yeah, it's it's telling, right? That it, it's also telling though how how highly teams are rating this dazzle hero that a team with an axe would still second phase ban the Dazzle. Interestingly enough, OG opening their second phase with the Pugna. This gives them a lot of early tower aggression. Also good against the PA pre-BKB with the Decrepifies. Yeah. And they will run this hero. So you want to talk about the flex value of the Axe. They will run this hero in the three roll as well as the two. Uh, small chance you could even see Pugna bump back to support if there are enough uh, Netherward vulnerable heroes on the other side. Where do you go, Vega? Well, Vega won't have the final pick. They have sometimes picked their mid at this stage, or they'll leave it until the fourth. You could actually run the PA mid as well. That's another option available to them. It's not too yeah. bad because you really need to accelerate towards that level two coup de gras as quickly as possible. Yeah, most of the games that I saw in the major qualifiers where PA just absolutely owned, she started off in the mid lane. You know, that said, obviously against a Pugna, that would be painful. Uh, definitely taking the time on this. I'm not sure they fully anticipate the Pugna. As you said, it's unlikely they want to lane that up with the PA because it is definitely a Pugna favored lane. You, we've talked about this before. When you pick this PA, it's bad when you go up against these magical heroes because you're relying on the blur to dodge the physical. Of course, you have no means for that against the magical damage. Hmm. Apart from selective yeah, see, things, I'm, I'm still one of those hopelessly old-fashioned people that likes the sniper pick against the P, uh, against the Pugna. But okay, Spirit Breaker, and that and okay, how could we not have talked about Darkseer is still on the table as the next pick for Vega Squadron. That is a hero that Kazu absolutely loves. He was one of the few offlaners that was picking it even during the last patch when basically everybody and their grandmother thought that hero was complete garbage. Gold. And the, the bulldoze and surge combo with Spirit Breaker's charge is just, it's pretty ridiculous. It's pretty insane. You can also build in some like tranks. We talked about the add up of movement speed as the game goes on with these small items like wind lace in conjunction with that surge. It hurts when you make impact. And there is the okay. do so. All right, OG, that will give them a tanky front line. And you were talking about yep. this Pugna maybe just being turned to a support at this rate. They've got flexibility lanes right now on OG. Any of these heroes could go Absolutely. anywhere. Absolutely. It just all depends on what the what the mid matchup ends up looking like. You know, OG perfectly comfortable running that Medusa in the safe lane if the matchups dictate the Pugna mid. 
So Vega need a response to this because the other problem with Dusa is she actually farms pretty fast. We've seen the PA Dusa match up. It's sure. A little bit rough for PA, of course. The issue is that... Oh, there it is. There it is. That's Screw what we were going to say. Yeah, I, this is the you focus. just can't... You can't pass that up. I mean... Actually, I, I like this drop by Vega, honestly. I think it's going to set up uh, a pretty good setup for Chain Frost when you got the Vacuum Spirit Breaker combo coming out. You know, the, they, they can... Those three heroes are going to do decently well at making space for the PA. I think they're going to be able to threaten the lanes. A super aggressive LM. Like, if you think about this, the Iron Shell plus the frost armor onto a spirit breaker. That's easy first blood potential. Unkaban will come out from OG. They are identifying correctly here because you look at Vegas lineup so far. We said we have some PA primarily mid, but if you add someone like a Kunker to the lineup, they do have a hell of a lot of early aggression. You reach six and yeah. then you just go looking for kills constantly. Yeah, I don't know that Kunker would have been would have been the pick though. I mean that's still your your that that makes it so that PA is really well. I mean, Kunkka obviously can scale into physical damage for Miss Cleave, build build the Daedalus and whatnot. But you, know, you just you have no physical damage there other than the PA until the Kunkka gets items. Yeah, well, the magic damage transition against like the Pugna, the Rubik, uh, it, it's the lockdown, right? Like you can get active pretty early with a, a yeah, pick. but it's still it, it's still easy. I, I mean, yeah, the PA can build the Fusil, but. You know, I, I would like to have a, a slightly more more reliable diffusal carrier against the Medusa. I think you pick, I think you pick Marana. Marana, not a bad choice. I wouldn't advise something like a Monkey King just because there's already Pugna there that can burst through you. Marana, on the other hand, has right. the escape from the Life Drain. And Templar. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. All right, they did ban out the Huskar as well. So they identify oh. correctly. That's... Hmm. Can handle the Deuce a reasonably well. Same for the Pugna. Yeah, it's 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 okay in both of those matchups. Okay. Problem is, can't you 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 actually have quite a bit of core flexibility as OG. You could easily just pick something like a Batrider or Venomancer and just that's what I'm destroy thinking. Destroy the TA. This axe can still be a support. Yeah, that's one thing I'm looking at right now. I don't think you want any of your current cores up against the TA. You could run it, but. The problem is once the TA reaches six with the Spirit Breaker as well, there's a lot of kill potential. And there's a Juggernaut. Wow, break. that is okay. Alrighty, so it looks like this is going to be the Axe support is the question. Yeah. So they're going to go with the they're going to go with the Medusa against TA in the mid lane. This should be interesting. Pycat will be taking that Juggernaut, looking to farm up. And of course, we already know who's going to be playing what on the side of Vega. Nothing too surprising there. It will be the mid Dusa. And there we go. Post five Axe. That's the part we were waiting hmm. to see. It was most likely, though, like Pugna, it only feels good as a support if there's a lot of valid decrypt targets, which in fairness, there is in right. this game, but I still think it needs a little bit of gold to push early on. I do. So I'm going to go ahead and say, I don't think OG has quite the draft advantage in this one as they do, as they did in the last game. I, I like the potential of, you know, PA and TA are both do stuff heroes in this Vega lineup. And and when you talk about stacking the Frost Shield and the Ion Shell on those heroes, along with an Ion Shell Spirit Breaker charging in, and they're going to be able to take these sort of skirmish type engagements and get around the map. Now, when OG's Death Ball comes online, are they going to be able to sustain through that? Because OG actually does, like the, the four Wraith Band Treads Medusa is is much better at getting active than people think. No, I agree. We've seen it come into effect. Of course, Vega's Assassino lineup. You, we talked a lot about Surge on a Spirit Breaker, but actually Surge on to a Templar Assassin. That rundown yeah. potential is actually incredibly scary going into the mid game. Well, and, and the other thing is, we've seen Mage have some problems in a couple of games earlier today giving away deaths. And TA is a hero that you just absolutely cannot do it on it's it's kind of like the same problem that a queen of pain has that it's like you die twice at the wrong times and the hero is so momentum dependent that it feels like your game is over oh. luckily they have a backup in the pa but that's not the way you look at this they're hoping that mage can at least draw out this mid lane and 
Honestly, Deucer versus Templar Assassin. It's a hard lane to die in as a Templar Assassin. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard lane to die in, but, you know, you, you're going to need to contest Topsum here. Because this, again, Medusa in this patch with the rework to the stat items, and she's possibly the hero in the game that benefits most from stats. <laughs> You, you, you can't just sort of passively trade farm in a lane against a Medusa. And they can also... It's not like you're getting the advantage. Sometimes TAs get that advantage about from being able to stack the Ancients and go farm that. But a Medusa can go and fall back to that jungle just as quickly and farm just as quickly as a TA. Exactly. Scouting out early on to see who's in which lane. Of course, we will see that Dark Sea Spirit Breaker combo. It can be pretty scary. Especially when you're a melee hero on the other side. I mean, you've got that spin, but you're still going to feel the pain coming out. Yeah, they're even flirting with the idea of having Pexu down here, at least at the beginning of the game. They could actually get a kill easy. This is the thing we're talking about. You've got the Iron Shell, you can charge in, and you've got the Frost right. Armor. Uh, Jarex is an easy pick off in that scenario. They've already surrounded him. Yeah, you him. stack those two spells and... He knows. He put down this ward pretty early on. <laughs> and that should give it away, actually. There should be a sentry coming down. It's Jarax just well, toying. Jarax is playing with... I love it. <laughs> playing with absolutely no fear. I think that was actually... Put, like, it's smart as well, because you move around like that, they then won't look for the ward there. The first move he made would make them think there's got to be a ward around here. But when he casually walks that close to a Spirit Breaker, you assume, no, there's, there's definitely not an obs down. Okay, and as we expected, Pexu is going to support top in support of the PA. So we will... Oh, Jarek's rotating middle here. Not quite. The... I was about to say classic 2-1-2. Not quite yet. No, he just wants to stop out is, the LECS. This is a good play. Well, it's just you want to get Medusa off to a, a good start in the first couple of waves against this Templar Assassin. Yeah, and you saw the way he moved actually pretty deep with the Fade Bolt to make sure it didn't hit onto the creeps either. So he wasn't shoving the lane too hard. But Pexu's here. This used to be one of the kings of these dual mids, but since the removal of sacrifice, it's not really about that XP grab. Well, he does hit Jarek's pretty hard. Right, and Kezu just being tremendously annoying. I mean, this Juggernaut is is going to have to last hit and tank, more importantly, tank creep waves under his own tower. He's going to be able... He hasn't spent a skill point yet, but he's going to have to probably skill healing ward earlier rather than later in this lane. And of course, early on, the Blade Fury cooldown is quite large, so if you get forced to commit to that defensively, you are stuck missing probably a whole creep wave at a time. Both of the supports a little on the low side in this lane. They are, but, you know, the supports are the only ones that really offer the pick-off potential when you think about it. It's a little bit of conundrum. There's a charge coming in charge on Jerax. He's been slowed down. They'll happily dive the task. Spirit Breaker is pretty tanky. He's coming in. Mage moving across right now. And he's level two, so he's got the bash. He has, and they'll move in. Fate Bolt's the going to be blood. there. Fairy Fire. Can they get the final touch? Mage will use a refraction. He should be able to get it now. One, and he'll need two more now. Two. Jerax just wasting their time. If he denies Very himself nice. right now. No, it's going to be there. Oh, he doesn't get it. The creeps attack first. <laughs> he, at least he drew off the extra charge. He does waste a little bit of time away from lane for Mage, and suddenly sure. Topson is getting that CS lead. Yeah, and that was really the, the idea of having the supports mid to begin with. Maybe next time we'll be the new support here mid, but it, it's two range heroes, buddy. Yeah. This doesn't end well. Go for the TP away, knowing he can do so. So one of the big benefits of picking the Spirit that Breaker is he can just TP back to base and then immediately get back out with the charge. And that, that hurts, man. This... Oof. Those Medusa right clicks, even with just only one full Wraith Band completed, they're taking chunks off that Spirit Breaker's life. You know, he's, maybe next time he's going to charge back down to lane here in the bottom. Then on the top. Kezu's low, though. And Kezu's low, but Jug's nowhere nearby. And I was about to say, top lane, they always have to keep two here just because this combo of PA and Lich can do something. Meanwhile, TA in the mid lane gets ran down. Oh. That is a kill that should not be happening no i mean i mean the lone bright spot is i think the kill went to jerax instead of topson yeah but still still that's absolutely this, fine this, this is kind of a little bit what was our concern with mage is that 
Anytime you're giving away a kill as TA, especially with a Medusa on the other side. Yeah, you're in trouble. a huge influence potentially in that lane. It's also the fact that they tried to start the dual lane, but you saw the, the, the impact of these different heroes. The Fade Bolt just makes you the winner in these two-on-two -on -two engagements because suddenly you can't trade. I mean, Kezu is, is it's got to be said, having a farming field day down here on bottom, cutting these creep waves. Basically you know, free lane. Pycat's Jug has not suffered nearly as much as you might worry about. Meanwhile, no tell is suffering the top. Himdara moves in. He'll get the kill. Seb needs to be careful himself. Luckily for him, yeah, he does not have the Phantom Strike for another five seconds. But yeah, this bot lane oh. is the big focus. Kezu is rushing towards that Helmet Dominant. And meanwhile, the charge with the Surge coming in. On the tops in here, pushing him even closer to Mage. The Fade Bolt will slow us down a little bit. Out of mana on tops They're going to drag Mage back. Maybe next time. Oh, just tanking it all, though. Tanking the tower. It's going to be fine. They did actually almost get tops, and he couldn't afford to pursue that with no mana and barely any health. You know, I, I actually forgot Jug in the last couple of patches. He's gotten a lot. He's gotten a little bit of a, a, some mini buffs. He's got a lot more armor. He's, he's at 12 oh, armor right now. Bizarre. So he's been able to thank the... Oh, God, no. They chase him on the tower. Maybe next not time he's not there in time. We're so focused on that, Jug's free farm. It's just the issue of PA's lack of free farm right now. Nine yeah. CS. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I've been wondering, like, how is Jug tanking all these creep waves without the, uh, without the, having skilled the healing ward yet? But of course, he's got a lot. He's, he's got 12 armor right now. Yeah, this is feeling pretty but, good. Yeah, the, 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 that's the big concern right now is the farm, of course, is the farm differential between the Jug and the, and the PA. PA has just had the link contested the no whole tail. time. No, no tail. tail. Being protected. Kremper 5, charge in, slows him down. That should fall regardless. This mage shows up as well. You know, this is this is my favorite part about the change of Spirit Breakers. You get to see these interesting interactions. Um, I don't know if you've seen any of these in your games, but because it's based on movement speed fully now, say you're, for example, right. someone like a, a Venomance with Gale, you will have fun successfully run just walking away from a Spirit Breaker moving at no movement speed. Yes. Good times. As a, as a Venom player, I... Why did I just admit I was a Venom player? You, uh. you did, and that's on record. I'm pretty sure someone's going to clip it. You, you know, Reddit drama, all right? Out of all the things they could choose, it'll be the fact oh, that I'm, you're a Come on, Reddit, <laughs> Reddit's going to hate me regardless. That's not going to That's not gonna tip the scales. Wow, Jug's showing some hate for Kezu here. He actually just committed the Omni Slash and failed to get the kill. Mm. But at least he can keep farming. That is something in which he is being uncontested. I just... The Ooh, in the mid lane. Two of the three lanes are, are really going against Vega. If Thompson gets bashed once here, I think he's dead. He needs to be very careful. They're going to TP in now. Meanwhile, Lich is going to go down in a different lane. As the aggression continues in the top, no tail is getting low here. Madara chasing through. We'll get the kill. Needs to move away from Sev now. Back to the mid lane. They're still chasing. The bash comes out. Telkis has left to get Mage away. Maybe next time, turns around the bashes onto Jerax instead. He has got the Fade Bolt. We'll reduce the damage, but won't reduce it enough as he does go down. Now they're going on seven. The top life drain comes out. Madara panic needs to move away quicker than this. It's going to be close. He will take out. Oh no! And Yikes. they charge him forward. Can they get Seb? Is the question. He's got the decrepify to protect himself. But we're stunned there. Frost armor is out. It's going to turn around. Gets rid of the Lich Petsu. Just evaporates to the power of this Pugna. I do that. <laughs> and and that is where you use that voice line. Now all these kills are great, but the big issue here. TA and PA are not farming. And and these are just two heroes that cannot afford to get off to a slow start. I mean, PA, a little bit. TA, absolutely not. Uh, it's not like anyone is stacking in the jungle for you to recover. Uh, there's, there's, there's one stack here on the Ancients, but it's not exactly a huge one. Charging the I mean, ball. Kezu oh. and, and <laughs> He's doing great. Cat have been sort of at each other in this bottom lane, but absolutely nothing <laughs> has come of it. <laughs> the catapult. Just to get Jug lower, he's out of range with his healing ward, and there is a scary Moo Cow coming in right now. Gets the bulldoze off, but Seb's here. Maybe next time he needs to escape. Yeah, you're gonna have a hard time going on the 14 armor jug <laughs> Juggernaut with two Wraith bands, buddy. It feels like right now, Spirit Break can never get anywhere quick enough. We see him reactively charge many right. places, but he never gets there in time for a kill. Top though, yeah, it always feels kill. like they're waiting on it. No tail going down in the top lane here. Mandara needed that desperately because he is the poorest core in the game right now. Of course, the Deuce is suffering a lot as well. 
And Templar Assassin suffering more. Drag back. The life drain on the charge through. Maybe next time on time this time. Jarax, can they get a bash here? This is the target. But well, the RNG is not there. They'll put down some traps. OG needs to be careful. They will put down sentries. No tell says, nope. I know what they're planning here. There's just a focus. Constant focus on making sure TA gets nothing here. Like you said. Yeah. Not a hero that can recover well from a bad start. And it, it, yeah, it just feels like they're they're putting so much into just making sure this TA can get nothing going. Down to even like having Rubik deny the range creep. Come on. <laughs> Jarek's just having a little chuckle as he's able to just sap XP and at the same time do his job in ensuring that Mage cannot do anything. The I'm pressure sure, is like, definitely somewhere, on. Somewhere Waga feels like he's getting punched in the stomach right now and doesn't know why. But the, there's there's a TA suffering so badly in this game. It ripples on. Meanwhile... Kezu, well, he is just basically making any old school offlaner happy right now. Trying to prove Darkseid can still do things as he's second on net worth and has got the but, Helm of Dominator but, board. But that's the thing. But but is he really? Like, has he really done stuff? <laughs> he's going to try now with the Surge. Going in on the Juggernaut. He has the Omni Slash to work with. Blade Fury comes out. No TP it's away. Where's the bashes though? No. I can't stop it. Not a single bash. I don't... Like, do we ever see this Spirit Breaker get bash? Oh, Mage, Mage could get picked off here. He can indeed. Life ain't coming out. The ticks are just bringing him down pretty fast. The frost shield will protect okay. though. Yeah, he sees it just in time. A little bit too close for comfort though. He'll be able to move away, but they are just disrupting his farm again, and he didn't even get to do that ancient stack. Meanwhile, doing ancients on the other side, Topson. Uninterrupted on no HP. Oh no, no! He just <laughs> he gets killed by the creeps. Oh no. Alrighty. Slight mistake well, being made by the Dusa. <laughs> you know what this is? It's uh, usually to have four Wraith Bands, so he's used to have a little bit more health. Pug Pugna trying to make use of an Invis rune here. Coming around the backside of the PA is the Juggernaut. Well, he's not even needed, really. Seb's kill. Play him ahead here. Madara still suffering, still nowhere to recover. At least your TA is starting to catch up with the network, though. Surge in. Ventar's here. Lift back. They've actually caught Kezu pretty deep here. He's trying to be the one initiating. Instead, they turn around on him. The trap won't protect him. The wall goes down. We'll create a few illusions, but they don't care too much. Kezu, yeah, like, he was your hope. You end up seeing the damage potential of the wall, but it just goes down with absolutely no follow-up in position. I mean, that's the other thing right, as well. The, the TA is recovering nicely here. That's the thing, though. The TA is recovering, but your big boon right now is how well Kezu was doing. All of a sudden, right. he's behind a net worth. And that was his big gank opportunity. He can't do anything with it. And I, yeah, and I'm just, I'm not convinced that that gold is doing that much for you right now. I mean, the, the HOD, are you really going to get a ton of value out of that item? Omni Slash in the mid lane. Okay. Juggernaut getting value okay. out of his abilities. And the charge onto him may be too late. The steal's there from Jarek. Nice lift. Oh, nice. Quick reactions. Out of the play. And he's got the surge now. They could actually just rush No Tell into the middle of this if they want to. You can already see it from the movements from Vega. They back up fully. They're like, nope. That tower is gone. Surge is actually very threatening at this stage in the game. The heroes that OG have. Oh, absolutely. Well, let up on the pressure. OG starting to feel the lead that they are building as all three of their cores are topping the net worth chart. And this Dusa is going to get active very soon. Already picking up the Yasha. We've talked about this before. By OG into the dire jungle up here. Not going to catch anybody, but they are going to mount a serious push here, I think, on the top tower. Yeah, Seb can no. poke and broad. But the thing I was going to say is, we, we talked about this before, is the Deuce getting active so early. I mean, we're 12 and a half minutes in. You've got three Wraith Bands. You've got a Yasha. It's not long right. before you start pushing on these towers as well. It, just, it feels like this, this, this Darkseer needs to make some plays. He does, because I'm looking at Madara, and Madara is still full on recovery. He's going for a Diffusal build here. I mean, you need it as well against this Deuce. Someone has to build it. Mm. Charge top. Moving forward here. Jarex with Surge to get away. And there's a Surge on the maybe next time. He says, you can do it. So good. Like, don't live. Jarex is quick on the response. He steals the Bulldoze as well. Which means he'll get quickly Stop. out of this. Going for the TP. It's going to be close. Yes. Jarex makes it on about 10 oh, HP beautiful. after that final strike. And keep in mind, that was the never strike, by the way. It looked like it was cancelled. It wasn't. That was the status resistance, partially. Right, give give Seb the assist there from getting away. 
clutch decrap. I thought they I thought he he was putting himself at a little bit of risk there, but He's so fast though. Look at his movement speed right now with the Tranks. Exactly. Tranks win lays 440. 440. Charge coming in, maybe next time with the surge. There's a cute play. Can you get no tail though? Cool. Actually gets it time perfectly with the Spirit Raker here. Gonna drag him back. Now the gaze. They're gonna make no tail turn gaze. around. The lift is trying to get him away. Gotta keep the captain alive. And they'll do it. South there as well. They can look to turn around. High cap moving forward. He does have the Omni Slash again, but there's a creep wave. Yeah, and they're pretty well positioned, our Vega, to respond to any aggression here. Yeah. Vega have adapted to the way this mid game is pulling away from them pretty well. And we talked about the recovery of the TA, but it's still the PA that is the big concern. She's the poorest of all the cores trying to catch up. Scan's going to be there. Jarax, that's pretty oh, deep. Engage with the Dire Shrine. He actually got the refraction as well. He's just mocking at this point. They're charging through. They actually got his step instead. Jarax gets the steal. One of the bulldozers again. It won't change the outcome as OG lose two heroes. Yeah, I think Jarax may have baited Seb a little bit there. Tinsy tiny bit. He basically stood there in the middle of them at first. It's, you can't imagine him just screaming, we can do this. We, we can do this. I'm not sure there what the end game player was there. But these are professional players. They they know better than Arsenal has. There was a plan. Yeah. So, I mean, you talk about TA catching up. And that's true technically, right? She's, she's caught up in farm. But but it still doesn't necessarily feel like TA is just going to be able to run around killing people. And she still needs that Deso to feel like... Uh, okay, no being really killed, though. Isolate. <laughs> okay. Madara. Talk about the other A. PA. Getting a little kill right. there. Maybe next time was holding the Never Strike in case it was needed. Not charge through. They saw Seb here. He's next to a trap as well. He's going to walk the other way though. Now, yes. Never Strike pushes him back on top of the trap. Slows on to two. Nice lift to slow down Mage from getting involved. The fires there. Seb trying to move away. The urn is on him. Another trap is going to be used, but he's still oh, so far. Coming in. Pycat's going to TP right on top of Madara. He is. Madara needs to get across here, but who do they go after? Jax getting low. Maybe next time. Doesn't get the deny to the creeps. Instead, he gets killed by Juggernaut, who still has the Omni Slash to work with. Now, Chain Frost going out. Looking to turn around. Spin will come out from the Juggernaut. He'll be able to move away from this. And he doesn't have the mana for Omni-Slash anymore, so he has to completely disengage. Uh, but Medusa doesn't. Okay. Goes in. Vacuum's going to be there. Thompson defends himself. Needs to move away from the TMB. Careful, because they turn around. Surround him all sides. He has no mana. He has no life. Super aggressive by Thompson there on the backside. They pay a price. And now and that's they'll a, lose their tier one. That's a big deal, right? That gets TA up to level 13. And, and she is now in this game. I thought they were going to be able to maybe pick off Seb there, and that could have been the kill that TA needed to get started, but instead it happens at the very back end of the fight. Now the call from No Tell. A hope in here. Can they get through Mage? Spin's going to be there. They got the Omni Slash. They still don't have a chance to use it, but the damage on the Jug is pretty large. Left back. Mm. Let's spin found. Pex, who should be left behind. Life drain and a blast means Seb gets the kill. They keep their tier one up. Mm. And look at this the Diffusal on the PA, recognizing. What we've been talking about, about the Medusa potentially accelerating in this game. She's going to be ready by the time Topson's back up. Absolutely. Going to go heal up now. They've been trying to for a long time, but there's a charge in. Maybe next time sees everything. Ball does. Dun, 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 dun. Needs to move away very quick here, though. We slow Traps down with the battle hunger. Lift to slow down Mage. There's the Omni Slash going through. Kezzy trying Omni to help Kyle. No, on the side, the call comes out. They'll get the kill in the TA. They get rid of maybe next time as well. The phase moves forward. Surge out from Kezzy to escape. And that will signal for OG to go back into the pit and finish what they start. Uh, Dagon will help trying to get a kill on Kezzy, though. Dara can at least get the Never Ward. Needs to be careful of himself, though. It's all just space, so Jug can try and do this, Roche. But without the healing ward, he realizes the effort exactly. is futile. It's still going to be super slow. I mean, it ends up working out for him. And they get the kills. They can't complain. Slows down the TA again. Allows the Medusa to stay ahead. And the PA, oh, yeah. in the meantime, is feeling very pressured. That TA pulled ahead of the Medusa momentarily. She was the most farmed hero on the map and and has already one of the myth Mithra Hammers in the Blightstone Torch of Deso. And we're seeing Sanj and Yash completed on Topson, heading into that Scardi next, at which stage he should be able to stand in the middle of these fights fairly well. I'm still concerned about how he handles the PA. Right. With that, uh, that, that PA with Defusal is, is going to be able to threaten him. I like that as a compliment. Right, the, the TA is now caught up enough in farm to be able to threaten the other heroes of OG. And you need something just to put a little bit of fear into Medusa, make her careful with her position. And usually we'd see the death layer pick up, but another reason they can go for this is because the P, or the TA is going for this layer himself. Of course, Spirit Breaker, 
that's an ambitious location to be alone. Yeah. Jock going fine. for he's defusal gonna... as well, by the way. Yeah, he's going to be up by the time it matters. I think we're going to look to the timing on Jug getting that defusal. Hmm. Could be pretty effective that's... here. Heights out the hero as well until they have BKBs on the side of Vega. Although there is always a surge, which... So far, it feels like OG are going, okay, they're not going to surge on a defusal target. They just want it on the Spirit Breaker every time. Hmm. It's just, yeah, it's just, it's just one more catch tool. That's nice. You are you are maybe a little bit light on hard defusal with Pugna's one of your cores. Or, sorry, hard disable with Pugna's one of your cores. Garak's being charged there. They side against it. They'll know they're going to the Roche Pit again. But I like the way OG's just kind of pushing and prodding. They know they're probably being charged. So they're trying to just force Vega to respond to things that aren't really happening. Still right, no this is Jarrett's. this is a big power spike though for you as Vega. If you can get some good position off on the initiation on the Deso reveal, like that's gonna hurt. Uh, they're gonna try. They smoke up. Maybe next time charging will cancel it. Yes. They could try and sneak into the pit themselves actually with the Desolator up now. Smoke. Both of these teams they want the roach. You can yeah, see I think the OG has a much better idea of where they are. They do. And look at the drawn lines. Kezu says go right yeah. around the back. Smoke broken by Seb leading the way in. Dagger's going to slow him down. Pulls him to prep by himself. Charge him down to half HP. Never strike. Going to get him low. Can they finish off Seb though? Now the game's coming through. They get rid of him. They just eviscerate him. The Frost Nova's going out. The Chain Frost tops and stands ground in the meantime. It's going to force Thompson. him away. This Medusa hit too hard in the back, but they're going to find Mage. As he gets separated from his team, he has no escape plan from this. He will go down as the dunk hits onto his head. And that's the entrance for a DD oh, that the Medusa was looking of for. Of course. Medusa picks up the DD. I mean, Thompson is doing damage. He, he zoned out three Vega heroes there on the back side of that fight, which is what facilitated them isolating the Mage TA on the, on the Radiant side high ground. Well, that enables them to go in if they want him. They should be with the DD. They'll have the Axe tank for a bit, and they've still got the healing ward that they can throw down 20 seconds if things look a little bit rough. Kezu could look for a big play with the vacuum. Um, That's a tough play to make, though. How would you make it anyway? You need vision in the pit to know exactly when to exactly. do this. Kezu, the charge coming through. It's going to be close. Lift's going to be there, though. Kezu can't do anything. Only slash being used as well. The call's coming out. Holds Kezu in location. He has no mana left, and he goes down as the Aegis is playing by Thompson. They're chasing forward. Maybe next time. He does use the bulldoze to make sure if he's stunned up or anything, he can keep on running. Madara, that does get the kill on He's going for no tail. The call oh, is in time on. on time, but no bash is there. It is finally coming through. Mage finishes the kill from the high ground, making sure he's nowhere near the juggernaut. Maybe next time. That is an ambitious TP, but at least you got the kill on the no tail. Jarex, meanwhile. <laughs> Mage, he just has to hide, especially with the refraction available on the Rubik. Okay, look at, and look at Medusa. Build. This is just going to be the part. Of, she, she is just going to be... If they don't get a kill on her in the next few minutes, she's just going to be gone. Like yeah. her farm, her farm distribution is just going to be like 50, 60 percent ahead of any dire hero. I agree. And you look at this scenario right now. Buff like you'd up next. Correct read because you're up against a TA. You're up against the PA. The only threat you have is big fat crits from Phantom Assassin. If you eliminate that, no one can fight you right now. Yeah, it just, it feels like TA is going to fall off pretty quickly in this game. I mean, I'm she had that worried. nice, nice window with the Deso reveal, but. I think kind of like the cherry on top was them losing the Aegis to OG. You needed OG that for that power here. spike. And look what they're going to run into. Yeah, Assassin. They, they, okay, Vega now know that they've been seen. Yep, with the d Spider sense has to be tangling here. And they find it though. Pex, you might have to tank the gank just so that Madara can get away. He does have the TP on make his escape. Down. They will at least find Pex though. They'll make him walk for a little bit, but he knows how this story ends. Yeah, that's fine. Like at four hero smoke for a lich, you're you're absolutely fine with that. Problem Especially is your tier if one your cores are already fi farming in your jungle. I think the big problem here is this is a tier one. They'll easily push him for a tier two on the side of OG. Yeah, you, this is the thing. You're going to have to answer this push of OG. I, I, I think they should commit to this. Yeah, they can even pressure high ground with a Dusa plus the Never Blast. Actually, Rubik is going back right now to set up on this tier one. They didn't want to mm. let it go. Dusa's TPing as well. Topton is here. We'll scare him a little bit, but it's a little bit too late to do anything. We'll finish the town in the meantime. They're rotating in heroes. Gates gonna come out. They try and jump on. Jarak's getting low. We'll be able to move away though now. 
Maybe next time a lot of trouble. He has no escape from this. He is going to go down. Can they find more? Chase it forward. Juggernaut wants to tug with the Omni Slash. He won't find it. In the meantime, Jarex gets finished off by Kezif. One for one trade. They still lose the tier one. So all in all, Vega, they can't complain with the outcome. Yeah, I think they have to be pretty satisfied with the last couple of minutes. Right. I, I, I thought that was going to go. They've, they've traded almost evenly here in a scenario where it looked like the Aegis advantage was going to be a lot more significant for OG. They've definitely cauterized the wound. This is kind of the catch. When you see a Deuce pick, when you see it play like this and the gold leaders built and the Aegis, your only real way to approach this scenario is just to slip, push, and be wherever Deucer isn't. And that's what they're doing right now. Although maybe a little bit too much. He's made it alone down here. It's a three on one. He gets caught out. He gets ran down. And that's your most farmed hero. Dying casual like that. An immediate smoke from OG as they want to continue this aggression. Question is, will they find anything? Because Vega, they know to back up already. You actually need to invade the top side of the jungle where Medusa already is. You can do so. Charge. I don't think you can Watch do this. Base. Yeah. They're just trying to keep vision. They want to know where Deucer is going. No, he's actually come in. He's picking for this. He wants it. This is uh, a big ass. This TP's back. He needs to run. There's a Scardy as well. I'm not sure he fought this one out. They go for the TP away. It's a good <laughs> yeah. read. He needed to because they were on their way. Meanwhile, they know no tails alone now. Madara looking for this opportunity. Dagger jumps in. Cool comes out. But no tell, he cannot get away. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you run that play as the Spirit Breaker just, just to split the enemy team up. You have the idea that they're probably smoked somewhere. They're probably setting up to go on you. And if you can get in and get out, it gets you a lot of information. Uh oh, Seb, <laughs> Matar just found him there. Oh, oh, whoops. It looks like yeah. OG are playing a little bit loose right now and Vega are capitalizing on it. Look yeah, at the line. I mean, OG's still just mega confident behind this Medusa. And there was actually a line drawn by maybe next time. He wanted to wrap around mm -hmm. through the river because they know OG has now invaded their jungle. The problem is it's still the Medusa plus the Juggernaut. And that is actually pretty scary. BKBs are getting ever closer though. PA has got the money together for it. Phantom Assassin, just screw that. He wants the Basher. Yeah. That's going to be uh, that's going to be significant for Vega. They're, they're going to be able to take a big fight behind this double BKB reveal, and if they can get the Medusa off the map, I mean, yeah, I, I kind of wish it was a double BKB. I, it looks like the PA is committed to this Basher, which is it's risky, oh. very oh, risky. I don't, yeah. He's yeah, got the Manta, I mean, so he's yes, tanked up. To, I mean, the argument, right, is that you've got Call and Stone Gaze to deal with, even if you go double BKB. But I think it's still. I think mean, it's still worth it just to get that, try and get that perfect initiation. Yeah. Both heroes are going to want BKB eventually. I mean, he's gone for this Diffusal Manta build, so he's kind of committed in this way. He just wants to spike up the damage. Oh. He has got a decent amount of stats. Yeah, you know, setting up for push on the bot here on the side of Vega. They're getting pretty close to the base. Meanwhile, on the top, OG take the tier two. Question is, who could take high ground quicker if you end up there? I mean, that one. is one thing with this, with this TA. The push is there. Absolutely. One team has the Desolator. And look at that. They force the TPs back. Suddenly the rest of OG have to leave. At the, or, you know, they could hang around their own peril. I wouldn't advise it. Yeah, both teams tightening up a little bit here, which I can't argue with. This is this is the point in these games, again, because of the way that tower armor was changed. The physical damage is rapidly ramping up, coming out from all of the cores. And towers feel very, very squishy. A lost fight at this point easily cost you Sutterat. Popson continues to push on the mid. They don't have CPs to get back to deal with Madara, who's still pushing on the base here. They know the TA is no longer there, though. Hmm. Do you think OG's committing to this mid push? They do it pretty fast. Meanwhile, the PA, decent speed, but of course you can't use that Phantom Strike to speed things up. Fresh PKB from the TA here. Mage has a chance to get something done, I think. But what can you do? The evasion, especially on Thompson as well, makes it pretty easy for him. Glyphs have been used. Tier 3 has already gone down the bot lane. OG need to speed this up. Crimson guys slow them down a little bit, but Thompson still hits pretty hard. And they have no creeps. This is a problem. Yeah. Meanwhile, Madara will finally realize the gig is up. He can't hang around anymore, but OG not taking a favorable trade there in the end. 
Oh, TP's back to the shrine, trying to catch OG here on the disengage. They'll find Thompson. There it is. Never strike. We'll lock him in place. He'll go for the gaze. Finally, turn around. Obviously, that's coming out. Do these amount of damage. Mage, he has no refractions left. Can they finish him off? Scott, he's slow. No, oh. he's going to go in for this. He's going to stand on the spot. The Blade Fury. BKB about to run out. It's going to be close. They get him. And now on the back foot, no tail. He's the one that arrived with the dust. Madara's going to run him through. Moves across the Jarrax. We'll get the crit straight away. The buyback out from TA. Before you even get involved in the fight. It's looking good, but now PA goes down. Thompson standing his ground. Maybe next time down to half HP. The crits are coming out as well. This arm blasted down so close to death that Dagon will finish him off. And now they're back in your base because Pops is still alive. Disaster for Vega there as the 10 second BK, the 10 second BKB charge for the TA does absolutely nothing. They're the buybacks. They need it for everything. Both TA and PA have had to buy back in the game now. They are so far behind in terms of gold. Look at the strike in. They're trying to go for this to Crevify though. The gaze, Dragon tops in. He is protected though. Throws out the snake. Madara trying to go in with the crits. The defusal doing a decent amount of damage to Thompson. He's forced to fight in the end. He has no escape plan. And they'll just leave him behind. They know he's gone. They do decent damage to the base still. Forcing all those buybacks. OG, they're going to be somewhat happy with that. They do have to give over the most valuable hero is the problem. A long time dead. Yeah. I, I think it's fine though. Half damage on the melee racks. So that will regen, but... You got the tier three in the rain tracks mid. I just feel like Vega need to, it, it just feels like Vega need to do so much. This might help To though. take the initiative back in this game. Finding Roche may be the first step on that path though. Can OG respond in time? Yeah, they do it really fast. Nope, they I don't, don't think have, OG are gonna be in time. They don't, they won't. They don't have a blink on the ax. He can't get in. There it is. Aegis gets claimed. It'll be on the Phantom Assassin this time. And she's on the TA. Suddenly, the assassins coming together may be able to break through OG the way this is playing out. What? Where do you go? Your focus has to be on single lane. There is the worry that OG is going to try and split push you again. Play Vega at his own game that they've been so good at throughout these qualifiers. But for Vega, it's very simple. Mid lane, push, take buildings. Yeah, certainly with the Aegis advantage. And they don't want to show too heavily, though. They should be able to get the tower. The catapult's going to be slowed down. That should be a deny on the tower. But that does open up your base wall. So OG, with the deucer up, the question is, are they going to sit back, wait for the Aegis to expire, or will they go out and look, try to make a play with the smoke? And it, it... OG may think Vega are a little bit farther behind than they are. I mean, that PA... That uh, MKB coming out from PA, they, they have quite a bit of damage potential there. They can go through the Medusa. They... We, we just saw how quickly the Medusa can die if she gets caught out of position. Especially with a second MKB being built and almost complete on mage. The damage is I am surprised quite the I, I am surprised that the Medusa hasn't accelerated just a little bit better through the mid game here. And and while that's been happening, you know, the Jug is... He's still farming. But he doesn't feel that dangerous as a second core here. This isn't the double butterfly scary man juggernaut we've seen in previous games. He's going to try and get there with the MKB. He identifies that it's all about damage in these type of fights. Mm -hmm. It's who can burst who down first, not who can out sustain the other. And no tail's going to get punished here. He gets burst pretty fast by Madara, even with the call. Cool. And that's going to be a free shrine for them. They could set up a push on the bot lane here because Axe, well, he doesn't have buyback. Even if he did. DD He's got the blink to now. Yeah, but can you get in their base quick enough? We saw them try and make this trade before. It wasn't with a DD, but it didn't end well last time. Well, the the, the sub Pugna with this big Dagon right now, Dagon 5 at this point in the game, if they can get an initiation on, in onto the Pierre TA. Can't find it right now. Tops it. Cool. By the wall. Grace and Lucian himself. They have retreated back to their base inside of OG to defend against this push. And it would just be a waste of time because, of course, Vega can get disengaged very easily with the surge. It'd be highlight eventually. You're going to get your hands on that AoE surge, which I think you definitely take in this type of game. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a huge talent in a game like this. And, of course, the other thing that people sometimes forget about the Darks is how he just scales based on how well you're doing. His opponents, mm -hmm. that is. You know, you got the Juggernaut, you got the Dusa. These illusions will do a lot of work in the fights. 
Yeah, and, and and both you know both going with, especially the Medusa stat based stat based builds. So those illusions are going to get the full benefit of the items. Definitely something to watch out for as this game goes on. So far, OG, they've done a decent job of making sure there's no giant gains, shall we say, for the side of Vega off this Aegis. They haven't given up their base. Yeah, and it, it should be mentioned because we talked about the, the bash earlier. Oh, little action Thompson. down bottom here. They initiated in a Thompson. They're going to go in here. Gaze does come out. The call's going to be there. Good lockdown down the Omni Slash. Madara takes too much time. Oh, the vacuum is good, but it's too late. Oh, the They've vacuum! Two. The vacuum does not actually help because now PA... It's a little bit of far deep. Just gonna look for a target here. Goes in on the Seb. We'll get the kill. Let's chase him on the back foot though. Tops down a half HP. Gonna fight oh, up the mage. Mage doesn't Medusa do enough damage. TA. No, he's the cheese in the BKB. He needs some assistance here. Thompson just stands his ground. He runs down Mage. Maybe I next mean... time on the side is gonna be found as well. Buyback comes out from the axe, trying to get involved in the fight. Madara, mage? he's nowhere near this right now. And they're actually gonna find a kill. Script right here. I don't think he understands. I don't how care Medusa's if you work. have cheese, dude. That's a Medusa. <laughs> <laughs> and you just saw it. The way the way that played out, the vacuum up the high ground, Madara had yeah, to chase I mean, self. Topson was like, thank you very much. I'll be a siege turret. Man, oh man. That that was that was an unfortunate fight for Vega to say the least. I, I'm not sure what Mage's plan was there. Well, it might just seem like Seb died, but honestly, the way he ran down, it did force PA to choose. Do you go for the Deuce kill? Or do you yep. go for the Pugna? And I'd wonder if it was miscommunication or if Madara was just saying it's impossible to kill that Deusa now, but he chose the easier kill. He's well, I mean, you, you certainly aren't killing the Medusa with one hero. That's the thing. It, you know, it's fine to commit onto the Medusa, but you better have both of your primary cores threatening her. Absolutely. And as a result, the Deusa goes into your base. They're going to hit onto the second lane. Madara has been spending a lot of time bot, but he won't be able to find anything there. Jog's going to finish off mid. Jarax getting low. Wants to be a little bit careful here. One big crit and he goes bye-bye. Lift has been used. Just trying to slow this down. Spirit Breaker up in 10. Mm. But 30 seconds so you have your TA and she does not have buyback. They'll realize this on the side of OG. Yeah, they're going to get two sets of racks here fairly fairly quickly. The attack speed on this Juggernaut coming out from that mule near. Absolutely, we'll get it. And it doesn't look like it's going to be a price to pay. Is OG... They clean up a second lane, they move outside the base. Now all they have to do is take control of that bot lane and start shoving in there next. What's the big turnaround for Vega is the question. What's the big item that gets them able to take these fights, really? I I don't know. I, I think their big power spikes are largely already passed in this game. And it and Darkseer's progress is, is kind of arrested. I mean, he's he's not even to level 20 yet for that AoE surge. It's definitely been stunted. And the PA, of course, has reached 25. That coup de grace talent is looking towards the Basha and the Abyssal next. I think the Basha was actually in the Corey, which got killed. So he's waiting for that right. to come up in 20 Blinks seconds. might die here to the smoke. Motel, charging no, forward. Blinks away. They decide against and they, Jason. And they back off. They, they can't commit. I mean, you look at the buyback yeah. stats. The base is almost completely gone, and none of them have buyback right now. Right. I mean, PA dies there. It, it, it costs you the game. So I, I think that's discretion is a better part of value, Valor in that situation. But you at least get just, past it feels really bad with a lineup that's meant to be taking the initiative and being aggressive around the map. They could look to get aggressive now. They will probably look towards smoke and soon. They have got the Basha now, Madara. He's waiting for that quarry to respawn. This might be the opportunity to try and make a play before Roche potentially comes up in 45 seconds. Hmm. And they're not doing it. Like I'm actually watching I mean, them right now. They're trying to decide. They have got the smoke, and they're just trying to get control of the lanes, the traps, and then make the move. Yeah, I think that's I think that's smart, and I think that that's one of the big things that you have to exploit now about Templar Assassin is the split push potential of these traps. Meanwhile, OG taking this opportunity to get rid of that shrine to make sure when they push this base, there is going to be no backstab. All right, so they know where Topson is. Yeah, you know, Spirit Breaker's just charging out. They just they, trying to push they, it out. They, they used the smoke for for what? Nothing. Huh. They thought that OG was going to come in the base, but well, these are TI winners. They're smart about this. They'll wait to see someone expose themselves, or they'll wait for Roche to show themselves. They've already got the courier waiting in the pit for that reason. Yeah. 
Of course, the side of Vega do see it as well, courtesy of the trap put down by the Phantom Assassin. Much, uh, TA rather, but it's much harder for them to get out and do something with this. Yeah, this is this is good methodical play by OG. Get rid of that vision. Do you have a small phone no tail on Jerax? Well, once again, there's no pressure. They could just wait this Roche out. They just keep Absolutely. the lanes pushed in, and the pressure's on Vega to then reveal themselves as they try to move out to counter it. There you go. OG already converged towards the pit. They know it's probably up soon. 10 seconds. Then Roche will make an appearance in his home. This is the move. This is the time Vega need to get out. They need to actually go and counter this. They can't just sit around. Yep. Nose tail. Nose rushes up. And this most likely the last hurrah here for Vega, especially if the fight goes against them. Are they going to smoke and try and contest this Roshan? They're charging in. So they're just coming in. They're leaving maybe next time. They need to go right now. It's down to half HP already. They decide against it, though. The lift's going to be there. They can maybe next time. Oh, anyway. They see him. They're going to drag him about a bit as they finish up. Vacuum to drag Thompson and Pycat out. Trying to go in the chain. Frost going to be there. Forces the spin coming out from the Juggernaut. We'll be able to move away. And Deuce is standing on the ground. Oh, oh. up on the backside. Yep, maybe next time in trouble. In the backside, they go in. Madara gets one, gets two kills, supports it down. Buyback comes out from Jerax. Madara sneaking in like a thief in the night. As he finds two quick pickoffs. He doesn't want to commit into this pit, though, because he knows the gaze is still available for the Deuce. No, the patch on it maybe next time means he can't initiate. I, I still think they want to try and fight this while the wall is still up. Kezu going in, vacuum there the wall is. there, using it again against Thompson. Could force him away. He's getting low on mana. They're going to charge in as they want to go. The gate's going to be the lift as well. Force the Spirit Raider look into our eyes. He's taking way too much damage as he will burn out and go down. He has buyback. He might want to commit right now. Madara going in, trying to get his hand on it. Gets the Aegis, yes! And the gaze coming what? out. Juggernaut found as well. He's going to go down. Thompson standing his ground. Madara's going to get low. Goes down once. Mage trying to stand up against this. But Thompson hits so damn hard. TA will fall. And it'll be an escape plan for Madara as he can't stand up against this. Kezu left behind in the pit. No one to reinforce him. And gets zapped oh. down by the power of Seb as he gets a triple kill. I, I like Seb. what Vega tried to do there, but... Okay. Looks like wow. Seb is seducing Madara. He brought him jewelry. As the gem is picked up by the Phantom Assassin. <laughs> yeah, Seb, Seb extending a little bit too much on the backside of that play. Getting a little bit excited, feeling that they might be able to win this. They're going to move in now. Thompson yeah. low on mana. But he's got that Satanic now. And here's the Siege tank coming in your base, this Medusa. They have got the Omni Slash as well. The buybacks, they don't hesitate. Yeah. They want to try and make a move on this. Charged coming in on the Juggernaut right now. Here's we're getting location for the surge. Going to be a little bit too late. Moving in right now. There we go. Straight on the Juggernaut. Can't lock him in place on the side. The Gaze comes out into Rubik. They're trying to lock him down. Vacuum's down to two. There's the Zap to get Lich down to half HP. Jarek's good fall here. Protected by the Decrepit Fight. Madari down to half HP. They've already lost three heroes. As the Omni Slash just takes over the fight. PA goes down as well. And this is mm. looking grim. Yeah, just a little bit too much blown on the backside of the fight. Trying to get the Rubik and the Medusa just unfettered. That's right though, Alan. When you have a PA, anything is possible if you believe in the crit. Can he get him <laughs> set down to half HP already? The throne is exposed. Gonna use a glyph to buy a little bit of time. Tops and zone him out. Vacuum into the wall. Connecting on the two here. Gaze does come out. Madara just gonna kite it out. Still not trying to chase across. Realizes out of money. Just has to go for the objective. But Topson moves across. Stone gazed up. That's gonna be it. GG comes out. Point. OG. Yeah, very nice. They win 2-0. I, I think Vega had the right idea with a couple of the last, last engagements. I like how they played that River Roche fight, kind of baiting them out with the Spirit Breaker charging in, baiting out the lift, stretching them out. The wall placement was pretty good, and they were able to fight around that for a long time. But, you know, at the end of the day, it, it, this is a Topson Medusa. Uh, it, the, the diffusal pickup by the PA is just not quite enough to deal with this hero as he just farms his face off throughout this game. No, G, they are starting to look pretty convincing, you know, after a rough beginning for their new roster with the major qualifiers. I I think they've dropped, did they drop one game to TFT? I think it was earlier today, but that's it. Yes. That's all. So far, looking pretty good. That means they will go up against NIP in the upper bracket finals, which will be commencing tomorrow at 3 p.m. CET. So it'll be the first series. And then after that, we will have the final tribe versus Vega at 6 p.m. CET. 
And then, of course, the final game is around 9 p.m. I mean, it's a rolling schedule, but that's kind of the rough schedule for us anyway. We'll be covering that, by the way, folks. That's right. Very Me, nice. Nahar's all three series. You're going to hear numbers. You're going to hear screaming like girls. There's going to be amazing amounts of bloodshed, especially with that NIP versus OG series. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun to watch because I, you know, both teams just playing like they have something to prove after disappointing a bit in the major qualifiers. You know, NIP looked convincing in dispatching Vegas Squadron earlier today. Uh, although the first game was pretty competitive, but yeah, this series OG certainly won the first one behind a, a new look from Thompson along uh, on the Arc Warden, and in the second game just couldn't quite deal with that Thompson Medusa. Absolutely, I'm just looking at the damage breakdown right now. Phantom Assassin yeah. barely had more damage than the Pugna. No, I mean, Subs Pugna just, he drew a lot of attention and, you know, he does, he ends the game with seven deaths, but he, he, his damage output was insane. Like, like if you'd have looked at that in the mid game, he'd have been way, way ahead, right? The Medusa's damage output just spikes upward late as she gets into these fights when she finally has her damage items online. I mean, Sub just drew, a, that's kind of how you draw it up in Dota. Right, your three through five just draw a lot of attention. They make space, and in this case, it was Topson taking advantage. I mean, Pycat's Juggernaut was was a part of a lot of the uh, a lot of the roaming pickoff attempts, as opposed to being a dedicated farmer for the whole game. I like to see that. Of course, the way this hero has been changed, the way Omni Slash works, and what well, kind of tempo of the game and how agile heroes can get active early on. This is the type of hero that can yeah. find those pickoffs. Yeah, and it does, and it, it it makes sense why you're seeing so many of these jugs go go more attack speed centric builds, right? Like like building into the SMY first item, going into the Mjolnir, and the Mjolnir, and then in this game had the nice sort of side effect that he got the Static Storm uh, active, the Medusa in a lot of these fights, and that don't underestimate the damage output coming out from that alone. That does mean OG go through into that winner bracket final up against the NIT tomorrow as we said 3 p.m start time vega not out of it yet they've got to go up against tft tomorrow as well that is it though folks after a long day the first day of eu action comes to a close and i believe we are just in time for na action let me i think it's na action that starts today i'll just check the schedule for you folks we've got this pretty little you know little pretty colors to tell me what's going on uh let me find it we've got bucharest minor no, that's not Bucharest Minor. Lies. Okay, that one is. I got I got so many spreadsheets open right now. I'm a real nerd. All right. Next up will be NA, which I believe has already started about half an hour ago. So Breaky will be taking you through the NA games, and then we'll be back, as I said, from 3 p.m. CET tomorrow. Plenty of action between now and then, as SEA has to round out. Uh, China will begin, and I believe tomorrow CIS also begins. So. There's going to be plenty of action. All four channels should be active tomorrow. So, you know, dealer's choice, whatever you want, whether it's a bloodbath and CIS, some efficient farming in the China region, some SEA drama, or maybe you just want to see some big hype plays coming out of this very competitive European region. We've got it all here. But that'll be it. See you tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you around.